Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of this course. In the last videos, my colleague Dr. Das and Dr. Bani Bhattacharya have already discussed the structure, OBE structure and uh, instru instructional design, Bloom's taxonomy, how to construct. In the follow up <coughs> videos, I am going to discuss some of the important design principles which we need to follow whenever we are designing any kind of e-content or interactive content, uh, what kind of emerging technologies are present uh, which we can use to develop our e-content. Then I will also discuss some of the OER resources which you can use to develop your e-content or interactive content and at the end I will discuss some of the copyright issues. Now, today let us start with design principles. Uh, to develop interactive content. Now, what is happening whenever we are talking about the educational technology, we are focusing more on the technology part rather than on the content and the design part. But it is also very important that how you are designing your e-content and uh, how it will be well understood by the students. Now, similar to a computer system, our brain has also some components. Now, in computer you know you have RAM, you have hard disk, you have processing, the information is processed. Similarly to uh, our co computer system, we have also three main parts, working memory where there is a cognitive system is there when information is being transferred, so it is uh, processed. Long term memory where the information when we are reading or when we are understanding something, so it is stored as a hard disk in the computer, we have also a long term memory where the information is stored. Now, cognitive load is the effort which our brain in the working memory pro, uh, takes to process the information. Now, it is very simple, in a very simple term I am explaining like when the cognitive load will be high then our brain need to provide more effort which will be difficult. So, suppose a complex concept is there, so our brain need to process more information, so which will create the cognitive overload. Now, <coughs> what is multimedia learning? Now, when these are like text, audio, graphics, animation, video, these are examples of representations. Now, whenever we are using more than one or two types of representations together, so that goes for the multimedia learning. So, when we are going for the e-content development, so we must go for the multimedia learning or use either animations with text or graphics with narrations and videos there. Now, there are three types of cognitive load, this we need to understand before going to the context of the design principles. First is the intrinsic cognitive load. Now, here we cannot change anything, the information is as it is the student need to understand. Simple example is that now Newton's third law of motion, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, student must need to understand this law with as it is, we cannot alter, we cannot change Newton's third law of motion. Now, extraneous cognitive load, it is in our hand. How? Sometimes what happening, we are creating some of the contents and it contains some unnecessary elements which are not relevant to the concept or which are not relevant for the understanding of those concepts. So, we can avoid those unnecessary elements. Now, German cognitive load, it is, it depends on the teachers, means how well we can visualize the abstract concepts for the student. Now, suppose there is a uh, 3D simulation is there, you can create some uh, uh, 3D simulation for the crystal structure. So, it will be easier for the student to understand crystal structure because there is a special orientation is there. Uh, but if you are using some kind of textbooks, so it will be difficult for the students uh, to understand those complex concepts. Now, I am going to discuss some of the important principles one by one, whenever you are designing either you are creating some kind of animation or you are creating some kind of simulation or even if you are having a PPT also, that is also very important how you are creating this contents. The <coughs> this principle is called redundancy principle. 
Now, here are two cases animation plus narration and in the second case the animation plus narration plus on screen text. Now, in the first case if you see the information is being transferred from two channels from our eyes and from our ear. So, here the information is transferred through dual channel. So, the brain use uh, need to use less effort to process the information. However, in the second case if you see our eyes need to see the animation and also see the on screen text and our ear need to hear the narration. So, here the brain need to have more effort to process the information. So, the cognitive load is high as I mentioned just before if the cognitive load is high. So, the chances of understanding the concept is little less. So, we need to try how well we can manage the cognitive load. Now, this is one example of the coherence principle. Now, we all know less is more. Now, I am just giving one example here you can see that there are so many graphics are there, so many information are there, so many words are there. So, similarly sometimes when we are presenting our animation or simulation we are adding too many graphics, too many sounds sometimes those are not necessary or sometimes it is irrelevant to the concept also. So, we must try to avoid these unnecessary graphics or words or sounds from this lessons. So, this is about the coherence principle. Next <coughs> is the multimedia principle. Now, in the multimedia principle is that we should always have pictures and words together. Now, if you see in my left side there is a skull, but that is the skull, but there is no mention of the different parts of the skull. However, in the right side if you see the skull different parts are present and correspondingly the description is also there that which part is which one. So, it is very easier for the student to understand the different parts of the skull. So, this so that means the pictures and words should be together. Now, this is about today this is the last principle which I am going to discuss. Students learn more deeply from animation and narration than from animation and on screen text. Now, why? So, again is the same thing. If you see again in the first case animation and uh, narration we are using 12 channel. However, in the second case if you see uh, animation and on screen text we are using only one channel that is our eye. So, which is creating the cognitive load or cognitive overload I should say. So, you can see in the in, in my right side when the information is being transferred from two channels. So, it is easier for our brain to understand the concept. So, we should always go for animation plus narration rather than animation and on screen text. So, thank you very much we have discussed some of the principles in the next videos we will discuss some other principles also which will help you to create your content in a better way. So, see you in the next video.